beautiful blue sky, ugly gray fence, shiny barbed wire. Yep, not much has changed. <laughs> Let's go find a bicycle or a scooter. Hey guys, we're at the Washington Monument today and it's a gorgeous day. It's like 60 degrees, that's like 14, 15 Celsius, something like that. And after several months of snow and cold, everybody's out. In fact, people are actually wearing shorts. Uh, today I'm going to walk over to the White House just to take one small little picture and then I'm going to walk you up to the Capitol building. I haven't been up to the Capitol in a while and we'll see what's going on on the way because I heard a very interesting story about art and spies. Over to my left is the World War II Memorial and Abraham Lincoln Memorial. I took you there the other day to show you some anti-aircraft damage to the Lincoln Memorial. You can find that video here. And one day I'll take you over to the World War II Memorial and show you some graffiti. Some famous graffiti, but not today. <laughs> Look at all these geese. There's like a bajillion of them. They are everywhere out here today. We're on the ellipse south of the White House grounds. You can just make out some cars there on the south a driveway of the White House. A lot of you have sent me photographs of the Oval Office saying, hey, there's cars behind the window and there's no parking lot at the Oval Office, so how could this be? Well, the answer is there's actually a driveway there and you can see there are cars parked on the driveway today. The Oval Office is off to your left behind those trees. So it's entirely plausible that if you take a photograph out of the Oval Office, you'll see a car parked on the driveway, just like you would today. So we've just crossed over Constitution Avenue towards the White House fence and we just discovered they are opening another small part of the White House fence. There's a little divot. For reasons that are unknown, why this tiny little corner of the White House Park has suddenly been reopened. <laughs> kind of like up at the Lafayette Park, where they have another unexplained little corner reopened. They will take it. Keep reopening. So I usually take you to nice posh places to get lunch, but today, today I feel like a hot dog. And I mean, why not? How you doing, man? Hi, how are you? A uh, hot dog and a Diet Coke. You want uh, chili and cheese? No, no, let's just do plain. So this is kind of interesting. You see this architectural wall here that's got a perfect mirror on the other side over there. Well, that's not actually a wall. Well, I mean, it is a wall, but it's not here for the architecture. You see, this is a levee. This is an emergency levee that pops up whenever the tidal basin floods too much. So there in the middle of the road, giant barriers can lift up or they can be attached and block off this part of the city from the floodplain that's on the other side of this wall. Here on the grounds of the Washington Monument. Now I've been told that they've only set up the barrier like once in the last 20 years or so, but it's here if needed to hold back the tides. The other thing about this barrier, it makes the perfect place to eat a hot dog. <laughs> Good hot dog. Would be better if he actually cooked it. <laughs> it's a little cold. So if you needed proof today is a nice day, Obviously, the scooter companies had the idea that everybody was going to be out today riding. So you have scooters from four or five different companies here. All you have to do is download their app, scan the QR code that's on every scooter, and away you ride. It's actually kind of a lot of fun. So see, the uh, Secret Service stopped every truck coming down the street. Like, uh, yeah, you ain't allowed to go down the street. You need permission? 
so that's what the ram car does they stop they stop all the big vehicles so they gotta reroute this truck That's what I wanted to see. I think you can see the Marine Guard. So we're going to continue our hike around downtown where it's pretty empty. All the rental bikes sit unused, unloved. When the days are busy, these racks are basically empty. Yeah, this was the Wood Woody store, Woodward, Woodward and Lothrop department store and this is the original design that was covered up by basically sheet metal and when they peeled off the modern facade they discovered this underneath I think the building is unoccupied right now but it still has is rather intricate artwork. Yeah, it had been colored over by paint many, many years, and then they slowly pulled off the paint. So this took a painstaking many years to peel off the paint to reveal what was underneath. Next to the Hard Rock Cafe, that being the Hard Rock Cafe in the FBI building, is Ford's Theater. And Ford's Theater from American history is where Abraham Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth. Lincoln's body was run across the street to this building, the house where Lincoln died. Of course, it wasn't called the house where Lincoln died at the time. It was the Peterson House. This is where doctors attended to Abe Lincoln for about a day, but he passed away after being shot. Now the interesting thing I've just discovered is what's known as Baptist Alley. And Baptist Alley is back around this corner. That's the National Union building. What a great building that is. National Union building. So, this alley is known as Baptist Alley. There used to be a Baptist church nearby. But if you go down this alley, it leads you to the back door of Ford's Theater. Yep, and this, oh, back in the 1860s, this used to have numerous stables and horses lined up here. John Wilkes Booth, as an actor who had performed at Ford's Theater many times, actually had his own private mini stable. I think we call it a parking spot today. Back here behind Ford's Theater, which is that brick building you see before you. After shooting President Lincoln, John Wilkes Booth jumped down onto the stage and made his way out through the warren of back doors to this alley where his horse was waiting for him. For good measure, he punched the usher, or the guard, who was guarding the back door, jumped on his horse, and rode off back over to F Street, where we just came in. So this is the alley where John Wilkes Booth made his escape. Now, this Chinatown is actually very pro-Taiwan, very anti-communist Chinatown. This is a gift from the people of Taipei to the Chinatown. But uh, it leads to some political issues, like the Chinese New Year Parade. It always has Taiwanese flags, not mainland communist flags. I think I mentioned over there that that place over there was used in the movie True Lies. There's a scene where Bill Pullman is courting Jamie Lee Curtis, the wife of Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
he does so in a Chinese restaurant. And Arnold Schwarzenegger's parked out here, stewing and raging about his really cheating wife. Now this place, walk and roll restaurant, used to be a guest house. It used to be a Surrit boarding house. And the Surrit boarding house at 604 H Street Northwest is said to be where the conspirators plotted the attempted kidnapping and eventual assassination of Abraham Lincoln. So the National Gallery of Art is right over there. This is a sculpture garden, which actually used to be a place where I would go ice skating. They used to have a really good ice skating rink here, but I think, I think when they went full-time art, they dropped the fun bit of the art, ice skating. Ugh. Okay. Let's get this camera turned around. Hi there. <laughs> Welcome back. Hey guys, from the National Gallery of Art Sculpture Garden, where I've taken a quiet little respite outside the noise and din of the city. Behind me you see the National Archives, where the Declaration of Independence is stored, and the U.S. Constitution. And on the other side of that is the U.S. Navy Memorial, and that's what I wanted to show you today. The U.S. Navy Memorial is currently undergoing some renovation with sandblasting and power drills and all that, so I had to come over here where it's a little bit quiet. The memorial is in honor of all those who have served in the Navy. And around the outside, there are a number of brass reliefs, sculptures, small little plaques commemorating famous events in Navy history. I wanted to point out two or three of them. These sculptures here were designed by a famous Maryland artist named as Antonio Tobias Mendez, or Toby Mendez. I say he's a Maryland artist, but in fact his work is all over the country. Uh, if you've been up to, say, Fenway Park, you've seen Yastrzemski, Yast the bat in the statue of Cal Yastrzemski. Uh, he's got Cal Ripken at Memorial Park. Uh, the Maryland State House has a bust of Thurgood Marshall, uh, Gandhi, Teddy Roosevelt. He's done sculptures all over the country. He's really quite accomplished. He comes from an artistic family. His father was a painter and his mother, well, I'm sorry, his stepmother was an accomplished photographer who went into street photography. Now, Jonah Mendez, she also had to pay the bills because street photography isn't that lucrative. Jonah Mendez had a second job, master of disguises for the Central Intelligence Agency, all right? Toby Mendez's stepmother worked for the CIA which was convenient because Tony Men Toby Mendez's father also worked for the CIA, and you've heard of him. Well, at least put it this way. If you've seen the movie Argo, you've seen him played by Ben Affleck. Tony Mendez was the CIA officer who went over to Iran and helped rescue the Iranian, the hostages who were held in the Canadian ambassador's house. He was played by Ben Affleck in the movie. He was a master of disguise, a master of forgery. Tony Mendez and Jonah Mendez worked with the Spy Museum, helping set up things over at the Spy Museum. Uh, and sadly, Tony Mendez passed away recently, but he did release a number of his artworks, which you can find online, and Toby Mendez continues to work as a sculpture around this country. Anyway, just a funny little odd story about American intelligence and art and how it all goes together. The National Mall is home to some of our nation's most prized possessions, and also this tent. <laughs> This is David's tent, and this is technically a protest, and it has been a protest for a number of years. How can you have a protest for a number of years on the National Mall? Well, there's a little bit of a loophole in the protest regulations, and that loophole says if your protest is going on 24 hours a day, you can continue protesting. So David's tent, which is a religious uh, evangelical type tent, has volunteers that staff that facility 24 hours a day to offer prayers and healing and all that. And as a result, David's tent has been on the mall for years and years. So what's new at the US Capitol? Not a whole heck of a lot. National Guard is still on patrol, but not quite as many as we saw in the past. The uh, inaugural stage, which is right up on the mid-level there, has been removed, or is almost entirely removed, and that's pretty normal for a post-inaugural come down. It takes about a month or two to get that removed. Both the House and the Senate are in session today. You can tell by the flags. The flags fly over each chamber when they are in session, and of course the national flag flies over the middle, and the main flag flies over the middle. 